Okay, any any questions so far from what we discussed? You know, it could be about the you know the cell group, the, this this model of cell group ministry itself. Um, any questions or anything that you feel okay? You know, will this area? You know, if you have any doubts, you know, like will this help? Will this really be successful or anything of that sort? Any questions at all? or more details um, you could ask. Or, you know, some of you shared, right? I think Aaron, you shared, um, and I think Dave also shared that um, being part of, um, you know, like a small group kind of a, um, being part of small groups during the week, right? And um, well, because of COVID, I think uh, you know the, maybe there are some changes. But um, you could just say, share, you know, what are some challenges that you face in such meetings? You know, maybe we could. What are the good things that have happened in those meetings? What are the what are some of the challenges? Um, if you could just share, you know, something that comes to your mind, you know. This is the challenge that we face in these meetings, or you know, I think that would be helpful. We can we can take a look at that. So anybody, if you've been part of a cell group, if you've been part of a small group, um, what is it? Something that you observed as a as a challenge, something that needs to be addressed, um, maybe a limitation. Anyone? Probably Aaron, you can share. You're part of some um, oh. groups, right? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Pastor. Uh, one challenge that I face during this uh, cell group is that um, there are some people know uh, who never used to come out from the box. So. I'm sorry. We, uh, just uh, say that again. Yeah. Uh, there are some people know who never used to come out from the box. So, mm -hmm. for me, I I find some uh, challenges to pull up. Pull, pull them out from the box. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So, who never me. come out from the what was from that? The box, from the box. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't get that word. Like, what is that? Uh, like, uh, just say like, uh, even in the even in the group, no, there are some people who never used to talk. Oh, I see. Used okay. to come out yeah. of their okay, come yeah. out of their shell kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, so they are they're happy to be there, but they are not. Uh, you know, you don't you don't know what's actually happening in their lives because they're not sharing, right? Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, w one thing to um, take care of that is to uh, maybe involve them in praying. You know, maybe they're not sharing, they're not speaking, but during the prayer time, when you know, prayer requests are there. You know, uh, you could ask, or when maybe you're you know, taking turns to pray, you know, one after the other, you know, to involve them and say, uh, why don't you, why don't you pray? Right. So that would, in a small way, they would start doing that. Um, well, uh, the thing is to be patient with them, right? Maybe they have some challenges. They, you know, they're. They're afraid of, uh, you know, speaking in public, um, afraid of sharing from, you know, what's happening in their lives in public. Uh, maybe that's the thing. So, uh, so to be patient with them. And also, maybe in your personal times, right? Uh, maybe they're not part of the group. In your personal times, to ask the same questions, right? So maybe in the group, you asked, you know, okay, what do you, uh, how is... Uh, uh, let's say, okay, how, how how were you able to exercise faith this week? You know, maybe to receive uh, financial blessings. Uh, right? You have this financial need and uh, you ask that in a group and uh, they were quiet. They didn't say anything. So maybe after the meeting is over, maybe the next day, uh, maybe on the phone, you can ask the same thing. Hey, so, you know, what do you think? Do you, uh, were you able to you know, remember we were discussing this, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, how's it going? And uh, is there something, you know, uh, the same question, you know, you ask them. Uh, 
and see what their response is and then say, okay, thank you. Um, and then keep it going for some time like that, you know, and then slowly encourage them. You know, I think you should share it. This is, this is so, so good. This is so useful that you're sharing it and it's, it's blessed me. It's helpful. I mean, if it is, right. So it is a, it's a new perspective. It's really helpful. So, you know, next time when we have a meeting, I think you should share it to the group. If it has helped me, I'm sure it will help others as well. So, you know, others will stand to, you know, benefit from it. They'll be blessed. They'll be edified. So please share. So maybe over a period of time, you know, this person will also get to share. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Um, uh, what about challenges like the the other extreme? You know, the person keeps on talking, doesn't give others a chance, right? Completely, uh, what do you call, you know, takes captive the entire meeting, goes on talking and another thing and another thing and another thing. You know, did anyone face that kind of a challenge? Any our meetings? Any such challenge? The other extreme. You know, some people just. Uh, it depends on the kind of uh, life group, right? Like if it involves others speaking, then you might face this kind of a challenge. I don't know if you face that. Anyone? Um, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so that that could also be a challenge, you know, like in the sense uh, you faced Kiran, okay, right? Many many times is it okay, okay? Yeah. So the thing is uh, to see there are two ways of uh, you know addressing this uh, at the start itself when everybody is assembled to set the expectation to share the guideline, okay? To say okay, we are going to have this uh, today. We are going to do this. Um, and make sure that person is also there, you know, who has this tendency to keep talking and and not give others a chance to share. So uh, to set that guide, set that expectation and understanding that this is what we're going to do. We're going to take maybe two minutes for each person to share, right? And and that is it. We're going to so that everybody gets an opportunity to share. And so you can you can set it right at the beginning. So this is the expert. So everybody understands. Okay. And you can also say, you know, if you're going beyond three minutes or four minutes, you know, uh, I might interrupt. I might say, okay, let's move on to the next person. So, you know, the, I don't, um, so, you know, so you, you, you're setting it up initially itself. You're saying, okay, this is what will happen if you go beyond. So that's the understanding. So the person is not hurt in any way, is not upset and also knows, okay, three minutes or four minutes. Now it's for the others to give, to have an opportunity. And before it, uh, you know, before the meeting actually started itself, the life group leader has set the expectation as is already instructed saying that this, was, this is what will happen that, that he or she will interrupt and say, let's give, let's move on. So, so that person understands that. So this would really help. Right. So, um, hopefully solve this issue but you need to you know keep reiterating this uh, at the beginning okay not after everything starts so at the beginning this would th so everybody gets an understanding the other thing is uh, also you know you, let's say you've not set that expectation and the meeting is happening and then somebody's talking on and on uh, you can politely interrupt and say okay excuse me i'm sorry to interrupt but um, I think we've spent a lot of time uh, discussing this. So uh, I'd like to, you know, you can just say that, and you know, I'd like to give an opportunity to so-and-so, to this person on the, uh, to the next person to share, right? To, to, to hear what they have learned or what they want to testify. So that way, politely, you can just, you know, interrupt and uh, you can do that. Okay, so that would help. Okay. Fine. Any other um, like challenges, you know, apart from 
this kind of a thing you know people speaking people not speaking any other challenges in these uh, small group meetings anything like thomas anything that you faced or prince anyone dev okay okay if anything comes to your mind yeah, uh, yeah. thomas yes I was attending not in a leadership role. I was just just sitting and listening. I happened okay. uh, in the leadership role that I didn't notice that because even I was a uh, you know a baby. Uh, you know, I was growing in the world that time, so I couldn't really believe it. Okay, uh, that's the truth. Yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, if anything comes to your mind, you know, you can always, you know, um, share that. I think it will be helpful. Okay. So let's continue. Um, so uh, we're going to continue about uh, uh, continue, and we're going to look at uh, yeah the personal life and character of the leader. Okay. So we said, okay, these are the responsibilities uh, of the uh, cell group leader. So now. You know, there there is this second section which talks about the uh, developing the you know cell group leader or the training the cell group leader. So we're going to look at that. Uh, but the thing is that um, uh, you know if if we were to uh, narrow it down, you know, here are some things. One is that uh, the person, the cell group leader, must himself or herself be a disciple, uh, be an example. Okay, because uh, who you are. Is what you can develop in others. Right? If I am a person, you know, who is uh, who is of uh, you know a, a certain certain character and certain uh, you know uh, certain things that are in me, then I would develop the same kind of people, right? Uh, so leaders produce their own kind. So, you know, let, let's say for example, I'm always. Um, uh, I, I, if I'm always on time, if I'm always uh, before time, right, for any any particular thing, if I'm always well prepared, um, then the the people in whom I'm, uh, people whom I'm developing as leaders, would also learn by my example or from my example. You know, they might have challenges, but this is these are values that are instilled at them, inst instill in them. Sorry. It's still in them, and uh, these are things that they are learning by observing. Okay, and uh, and this is what they will also develop into, right? Um, so the things that you value, they begin to value also. The things that you look down on, they begin to look down on, right? And your that is why you always say that your life, you know, our life speaks louder than the messages that we preach. Yes, the messages are helpful. Uh, definitely, you know it's uh, you know the uh, it's the word of God. It's the truth. So definitely, the the true God will use that, and God, it's 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 a big part of what we do. Um, the second, uh, uh, the other side of it is that the life that we lead. So uh, the life that we lead is uh, definitely going to be produced in the leaders that we develop so so we need to give attention to that right that we ourselves first follow the lord we ourselves you know ensure that um, these values are in us this disciplines are in us right? so when we raise up leaders it will be in them as well okay the second thing is um, you, you know uh, to have conviction to have passion right for well for for the work that we're doing okay to be passionate about what we are doing you know so not to do things you know not to be a cell group leader uh, maybe grudgingly you know grumbling complaining oh you know i have already so much work and then on top of that you know i've been invited to this thing i don't know why i took up this 
this responsibility and oh, there's so much on my plate. There's so much that I'm carrying. I'm not able to do that. Well, you know, so that is definitely not going to reflect a life of passion for the for the things that you're doing, right? So, well, we need to make some changes and say, okay, maybe you need to take some time off, right? Maybe you need to uh, take a season of rest and maybe maybe there is something genuinely happening, right? There are too many things happening and you're not able to focus on any one of them. Maybe you need to take some time, rest and be refreshed and and then be even better equipped to face these things, challenges, right? So it's no harm, but let uh you know, let our life be a passionate one. That you're, whatever you're doing, that you're passionate about it. When we say passion, we're saying okay, something that's uh, uh, an, an intense liking, an intense um, uh, driving force, right? Conviction, and uh, and and your life shows it. Your actions show it. Right? Your speech shows it. Right? So to have that, to be that, so that is very, very contagious, very contagious. When you say contagious, it means that it passes on to others. They also begin to catch that fire, right? Uh, to be passionate about uh, something, to be passionate about the work of the Lord, to be passionate about building people uh, in the kingdom, to be passionate about reaching out to Christ, right? So uh, to be passionate doesn't mean that you're just making a loud noise and you know all that, no. It is that that you're going at it with all your life, you know, with all everything within you that you are, you know, reaching for it, that you're doing it with everything within you. You're giving it all your best effort. You're giving it your best effort. You're without, uh, you know, without losing uh, steam, without compromising. Right? So that is what a passionate life looks like. You might be doing things quietly. You might be doing, you know, certain things. But then you're you're at it consistently, over and over and over again. Right. So a passionate life. Third thing is conviction. Okay, conviction about the the vision of the life group ministry. Now this is a very important thing. You know, if what happens if you're not in agreement? The times when it happens, you know, like you don't agree with the the way the ministry is done, then then the, the better thing to do, the best thing to do is not to get into it, right? Or to ask for more proof or to ask for more in information so that you can be convinced or you can be, you know, a person of conviction about the way in which uh, a certain ministry is done. A, a, a method of ministry. Right? This is a method, right? Uh, we're saying a small, small group ministry. It's a method. It's a tool for discipleship. So if we don't have that conviction, if you're saying that okay, this may work, this may not work, I don't know. Uh, the thing is to, you know, spend time with someone who is convinced, who is uh, living that life with conviction, and to, and to get more information. You know, why is it? I ask questions. You know. I have these doubts. I haven't, you know, I, I have these, uh, I have these clarifications, you know, how, how does it help a person? Will it really help? Will it really build disciples? Uh, you know, are there any downsides to it? You know, is there negative sides to it? Right? You ask those questions. And, uh, you know, be convinced yourself, be convicted yourself. Okay. Uh, we conversed about the model of ministry, and uh, so this will also help in in when when you are a person of conviction, when you are convic uh, convinced about certain things, then it would also mean that it would help put the effort. Because if I'm convicted about something, if I'm convinced, and if I have the conviction that this is what is going to be, it'll it'll definitely work. Right? Then I will put my best effort. Right? Otherwise, I I just might get pass mark. Right? I might say, okay, this is this is not something that is helping. This is not something that is working. So, uh, you know, I might just put some some pass mark. You know, forty percent. I'll be happy with forty percent. I'll be happy to put in forty percent worth of um, uh, efforts. Right? Okay. So. 
uh, that is about uh, some you know we'll be we're going to look at some more details about uh, um, some more information about the cell group leaders when we look at the section on cell group leaders training okay okay so ministering to cell members so here are some things for um, you know ministering to cell members okay, let's look at that so what are some basic information that i should be sharing when there are new people uh, who are coming in as cell members you know maybe you know initially you start let's say you're starting off with two people you're starting off with three people okay then there is an additional person who, who joins the cell group okay so uh, it could be maybe a person who's, who's not yet saved maybe a new believer and uh, you know they're all somehow you know they are um, they're now coming to the cell group right so accordingly you need to you know if it's a person who is not saved then uh, but is still interested you know i want to be part of this then the thing is to share the gospel first and foremost it need not be in a group setting it can be in a one to one setting right one to one setting meaning you're personally meeting that person uh, uh, you know in your personal time outside of the cell group meeting and uh, and sharing the gospel and saying okay that person is very keen that person wants to follow jesus doesn't know how uh, is interested so you you know uh, share the gospel and uh, and lead them to christ right uh, lead them to christ and uh, and teach about being filled with the holy spirit and receive the baptism of the holy spirit so you can do that and this need not happen in the cell group meeting it can happen uh, on a one on one if you're meeting them personally and sharing you know this person wants to come or this couple wants to attend and they are very interested they're very keen but they do not know jesus like they they want to know they are interested they want to know so now this might uh, maybe you know this might take time they're just exploring the faith so you can you know give them resources you can they might have a lot of questions and you can do that and this need not happen in a cell group setting now you decide right you can you can choose okay maybe I, i just need to do this outside of you know in cell group we are talking about end times in the cell group we are talking about you know we're discussing maybe uh, you know some of these uh, heavier topics which may not be you know which, are, which they they might be over too overwhelmed by this right and they are not even believers now uh so since they are interested i will you know you can choose to meet with them separately uh maybe at the home itself but meet with them separately and share the gospel uh lead them into some of the basics of the faith um and get them full you know minister the baptism of the holy spirit and and do that and then you know invite them for the cell group meetings okay so in the cell group meetings let's say you have you know new believers you have others who are coming now here are some things to share okay um if you're doing it you can share this with them privately right you can share this with them in a, in a separate setting or if your cell group is full of new people then you can you know have a session like this where you're talking about the church your know, history vision and purpose of church uh, what is the statement of faith of the church um uh, what is it Uh, about how does one become a church member you know is there a process in the church uh, for which uh, w- one needs to go through in order to become a cell group member so uh, so then sorry a church member right and then then and about cell groups uh, being committed to a cell group what is a cell cell group like and uh, and then so on right so uh, you can also talk to them about the sacraments of the church right what a baptism you know maybe they're coming from a uh, totally unchurched background and they have not been baptized in water or maybe they come from a different um, you know a christian background where they have not been baptized in water but so you can talk to them about that okay okay so this information is uh, in apc it's normally available on the website so people can access it so you can guide them to that you can have a session and guide them to that and say okay you read up and if you have more if you have any doubts i can clarify also right now uh, what about the cell lessons okay uh, which means what is the content of what we are going to discuss in the cell meeting okay so after 
a lot of things, a lot of, uh, you know, trying out a lot of things. We thought it is, it is good to look at either, you know, if they are new believers, the life, the cell group leader will understand, okay, are they new believers or are they, you know, have they been believers for some time? So if they are new believers, it's, it's good if all of them do the, the foundations course, the biblical foundations course, right? It'll be helpful for the new believers, for them to be rooted, grounded, and so that you know, the other things can be built on. Because if the foundation is going to be weak, you know, what they actually believe uh, about these things, it's, it's going to be very shaky. Then the other things, you know, it'll be difficult for them to, you know, build on the other things, right? So it's good to start with that and uh, and lay that foundation. And, uh, you know, now this course is available online, right? In the e-learning portal, it's available. So people can do that. They can, they can read, they can watch video, they can answer questions, and they can do this on their time. So uh, either the cell group itself can do it together uh, in a cell group meeting, if you know most of the people are going to be new believers, or you can individually just direct them to the resource and say, okay, why don't you do that? And you know, we'll discuss it, right? We'll discuss it, we'll catch up on it. Um, the second thing that we said was, okay, let's discuss, let's see how we can use sermon message, the sermon notes, the sermon outlines, and use that as our cell lesson. Okay, uh, we'll use that as content for discussion, for learning. Okay, the reason is this: very simple. In the on sun uh, on Sundays during the Sunday service, we have heard the sermon being preached. Okay, we have uh, heard it, <clears throat> but here's an opportunity to put it to practice. Right. Every sermon that is preached, we have an opportunity to put it to practice. Right? We may put it to practice, or we may not. Now that's a different thing altogether. Right? We may hear it, forget it, go back next Sunday for the next sermon. Hear it, forget it. So in the cell group, during the cell group meeting, we have an opportunity to review it. Right? Okay, this is what we heard. And what does it, how does it help when we review it, when we talk about it again, it helps us to remember. It helps us to recall some of the things that we learned. It helps us to put to practice. So here's a life group leader who's, um, you know, in the life group setting, in the life group meeting, and you're reviewing it and everybody's sharing about it. And the life group leader is also encouraging, you know, this week when you go, uh, you know, try to put it to practice, you know, believe God for those answers, uh, believe God to receive in faith, you know, put those principles that you learn into practice, uh, give glory to God, you know, uh, hope against hope, you know, in, in faith, in, in hope, believe. So, uh, you know, don't, do not consider the things, uh, do not consider, you know, like, just like uh, Abraham did, he did not consider the deadness of his body or, or of Sarah's womb, but gave glory to God. So you do the same thing, right? You do the same thing, like what Abraham did. And uh, let's come back and talk about it. So here's an opportunity to apply the truth. So you recall, you, you remember, it gets reiterated, and you get an opportunity to apply it. Okay. And if there are any doubts, we get clarified also. So the cell lessons being Sunday messages really helps. Okay. So let's say, um, you know, if, if you are <clears throat> pastoring a church and uh, so the, the, the best way to do is make available uh, what was shared on Sunday, it will help them, right? It can either be an MP3 recording. It need not be a big video setup, right? It can be a simple way. It could be you just record it on your phone and uh, maybe you don't have a website, but you have a WhatsApp group. Okay. See if you can send it as a WhatsApp message. Maybe the, you know, maybe a 45 minute WhatsApp uh, MP3. If you, if you feel that it, okay, it's, it's not, it's taking up a lot of space. Send it as uh, maybe part one, part two, part three, right? So that you, you split up that uh, mp3 audio 
message and you make it available okay and if you have a, a word doc as a sorry as a sermon outline make that available to the group as well okay maybe the church is small it's maybe a few people and you have a whatsapp group everybody is on it best way to you know make that uh, best way is to make that available on a word doc or it can be a whatsapp text message itself saying okay this is the outline okay so then everybody can in their cell groups you know share discuss learn so um, so this is something okay so first of all you know it can be either a biblical foundations course and then we are also you know um, uh, saying that it can be a sunday message and the the other thing is also to have some special topics okay maybe uh, this particular cell group needs an understanding on a particular topic maybe there are a lot of people who are you know uh, facing some kind of stronghold emotional strongholds in the mind and maybe that needs to be addressed and we have this resource um, and then so so the thing is to have a discussion with the leadership and have a discussion with whoever's heading the life group and say hey you know for this season maybe for the next uh, three or four weeks we'd like to do this you know there are people facing um, like emotional strongholds they are they are facing these problems maybe they need uh, they need some you know um uh they need some information they need to do a study from the word um they need to be, be able to come out of it so just thought it will be good if we can do three or four weeks of this so we're going to use this resource uh what is already there on the website and you know just keep the you know the the cell pastor or the leader uh, informed right and then we can do those special topics right and it's for a season and then we can get back to sunday messages again so this is what you know we been we suggest okay so ministering to cell members between the meetings okay this is something that we said you know was uh, when we when we looked at the responsibilities of the cell group leader so we said okay pray for the cell group members and also follow up with the individuals uh with these things like right, during the week either visit or a you know text message or an email whatever so here can you look at okay kind of expanding that and say what else can i do as a cell leader in between meetings okay now in between meetings it could be maybe a week maybe two weeks um right so there's a two week gap between meeting 1 and meeting 2 so in this two weeks what can what can i do okay uh, or you know whenever the group does not meet what can i do as a cell meet cell leader on the days that the, when we don't have a meeting okay so here are some things okay make efforts to contact contact text them encourage them email work at a personal level okay now Uh, be involved personally in their lives now it's going to take something out of you it's going to take some effort it's going to take time okay so because all of you know maybe you're already working as a cell leader you're already working for some organization maybe you already have some responsibilities now it's going to be you know additional time right additional effort we need to un- one needs to understand that but it will be worth it it will be you know it will be helpful because you're contacting them you know apart from the cell group meeting and uh, and uh, you know it is uh, you're caring for you know whatever challenges that they may be facing okay pay, pay special attention to those going through times of crisis and uh, difficulty maybe some are going through a uh, loss in the sense maybe they've lost a loved one and they are going through a season of grieving bereavement uh, maybe somebody is in between jobs right they have lost their job they are applying they are trying to get a new one uh maybe they are going through that challenge you know maybe uh, some others are working on their marriage uh and they are having a difficult time you know uh in their marriage you know so so these are these are some challenges that people have right so pay attention to those challenges pray for those Uh, pray for them who have these challenges um direct them to some resources right uh, which will help them overcome these challenges right okay so uh, develop a family 
by being around other cell members, supporting them, encouraging them. And when they go through a difficult time, you know, we, we and it happens, right? Normally people help one another uh, during, you know, during times of difficulty, during times of crisis, you know, and we notice also during the pandemic that how life groups would come around another life group member to help them, right? And uh, many, many, you know, such incidents uh, happened, right? People uh, from a life group, they, they cooked and sent food for the, uh, for the other members of the life group. And they did so till they got well. You know, one, one family would take care of the breakfast, one family took care of the lunch, one family took care of the dinner, or, you know, or in other ways, you know, one week, one family said, okay, we'll take care of this next week, some other family, right? So they, they did that. They helped. So... Well, that uh, you know, so that they they are able to come together as a family. Uh, so this happens outside of the meeting, right? Making disciples. You know, one of the thing is that um, when the the whole process of being disciples or making disciples, the Lord Jesus said, "Go and make disciples." Okay, disciples of all nations right all people groups uh, teaching them to observe all that i uh, all that i share all that i taught you um baptizing them in the name of the father son the holy spirit so that was the commission right? so this making disciples also involves you know certain challenges or issues that people have which needs to be spoken about which needs to be addressed which needs to be pointed out okay so some people might have addictions right which are visible in the sense you know maybe they're addicted to alcohol maybe they're addicted to some other substances maybe they have certain other kinds of addictions some might have some strongholds some challenges right some strongholds in the mind maybe some emotional challenges Right, uh, like uh, maybe anger is an issue, uh, maybe fear is an issue. Uh, this always fearful, fearful about the future, fearful about the children. You know, fear. Um, maybe some have other issues. You know, whatever. These things need to be addressed. Right. These things, if if it's brought to our notice, you know, some things are very very plain to see. It's very clear. Right, you spend time with them, you begin to notice this. Right? Either they tell you, hey, this is what I do, or this is what I'm struggling with, or you know, you come to know eventually because of their lifestyle, because of you know certain other things that you notice. Right? So these need to be spoken about, addressed. Right? So as per as a leader who's taking care of others, who's raising up other leaders, if these are there, one needs to address it um, with firmness and love. Right? Truth spoken with love. Right? And uh, it is with the intention of helping, it is with the intention of um, helping the person overcome. Like this. So, it needs to be addressed. It needs to be spoken. Now the thing is, yes, uh, some may want it, some may, some may receive it, some will not. And some may feel, hey, it's a personal thing. Why are you talking about it? Give it time. Give it time. But you also make it very clear that uh, well, this is the biblical stand. You know, this is what the Word of God says, and this is the hope that we have in Scripture that one doesn't have to struggle. Like one does not have to go through life every day battling this, and you can overcome. But you need to receive help, take help, and you can one can overcome. So um, you can definitely, you know, have that. Being a life cell group leader means having some difficult conversations. Right? People can get offended. People might think that, hey, why is this person saying, why can't we just discuss about the Bible and go home? You know, why are we talking about these things? But, and that's why you need to pick and choose, okay, when can I address it? Right? 
maybe you don't know that person too well you know they've just started coming and maybe you know uh, you can't go too deep into you know addressing these things but eventually you need to address it anyway you know if you notice it it needs to be um, addressed right okay meeting the needs of people if there's someone with a need like food money material things right so all the other members can come together and and uh, help and meet that need okay counseling some members might need a listening ear so it could be godly counsel um you can one can always uh, do that okay this is what the word of god says and but if uh you know if it needs professional help you know you know it because you realize that hey this is something which is beyond my ability you know when you say beyond your ability you're saying okay i may not be able to give the time right i may not i don't have the expertise right uh or you feel that okay this is not what i'm called for right so some of these things maybe it's uh, maybe it needs like professional counseling maybe it needs uh, an expert advice you know it can be with finances it can be with uh, relationships it can be with uh, you know addictions whatever you know and you feel that then you it is best that you direct them to a source direct them to a counselor direct them to someone and uh, and ensure that they get help Okay, so you don't have to take on yourself as a cell group leader, um, and and try to solve it and make mistakes and trial and error and you know see if it works. No, you can always direct them to people who are already doing it well, who are already trained and gifted and called for that kind of a ministry. So why not you know, direct them towards? that's resource so that they can get help of course from time to time we can always encourage them we can always share with them what the word of god says pray for them pray with them etc right but this we can always direct them so that's counseling okay handling conflicts issues problems uh if there are conflicts between members of the cell best thing to do is okay rather than it becoming a gossip session you know that person says something about the other person and the other person says something about uh, this person and everything is coming to you best thing is to get them both together or get that group together and say okay let's talk about it what seems to be the problem you know how can we solve it how can we address it right uh, so we can resolve conflicts that way and then and then move on right forgive if anything has been done any wrong thing has been done forgive or if there's a misunderstanding uh, that is clarified right so people can say okay it was just a misunderstanding okay fine no problem let's let's move on now that there is clarity now that we understand that there was no wrong intention there was no wrong motivation you can move on okay okay when it comes to mentors and protégés what we are saying is okay if you are mentoring someone right if you are counseling someone if, the best thing is that it is of the same gender okay so men counsel men men mentor men um and this is the best the safest you know without so that you can do that without any emotional entanglements and uh, you know which could lead to other problems right relationship challenges so um it is safe it is proven it is best to uh, mentor people of the same gender or counsel people of the same gender okay unless a couple is share uh, you know counseling others as a couple right now uh, you know as cell group leaders i'm talking about you know there, now there could be uh, professional counseling or people who do counseling as a ministry now they might be counseling you know people of uh, other genders and we're not talking about that we're talking about us as cell group leaders as as disciples if we are counseling or mentoring others now it should be of the same gender now that is something that we have you know uh we have kind of laid out okay okay so we'll stop here and uh next next week we'll go into um 
you know uh, about yeah a cell cell group being a ministry team and some of the um, negative things to avoid and so on okay and also some administrative uh, so we'll we'll look at it next week um so we'll stop here right any any questions if there are any questions based on what we saw um because some of these things could be very different from uh, you know from a home group setting i know that some of these things are very different from a from a castle point of view right um, so if there are any questions any doubts you can always ask okay fine right okay so i uh, just want to reiterate that it's a process right it's not an overnight thing it's a process always remember that discipleship is a process it is a journey right? it's a journey of many thousands of steps right it's not one major leap right it's a journey the lord jesus spent 3 years with his disciples teaching them leading by example commissioning them giving them those tasks and assignments and um correcting them right um rebuking all that happened in over a period of 3 years so it's it is a journey right but it's a journey that is worth making and uh, so it's a journey that is worth equipping us for you know uh, that we can be equipped to make the journey in order to disciple others right okay so we'll stop here and we'll catch up uh, next week on discipleship again okay god bless see you guys bye bye right see you so bye bye thank you pastor